Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Tim Dillon Show. I want to explain the backdrop for a minute. We are in our new studio in New York. We have two studios um, so that we never have to miss a video episode of the podcast. And our New York City background is on its way. But we wanted to get an episode out for you uh, this week. And we, we're, we're hoping that the background is going to arrive. But we're dealing with all kinds of characters, uh, people from the netherworld, uh, dark people that, you know, uh, you know, they exist uh, at the bottoms of stairwells and they can only be contacted by certain means. And, you know, we're, they're doing it, though. It's going to be great. But, you know, we are we are using uh, the, the, the people of the earth, as you call them, right? The little <laughs> kind of, you know, they burrow into things and under things and many of them are just there. And then we're using them to get... To get the, you know, and it's coming, so don't, but this is not the permanent background. It's a black curtain. Um, and SAG is on strike, and I support, and we're on YouTube right now, and I'm gay, YouTube. <laughs> I'm a gay person. I'm gay. I'm a homosexual gay man on YouTube in a very heterosexual, patriarchal world. Of people and what a oh, what a horrible thing for me to have lived through that, being gay, and I'm so happy I can be gay on YouTube, be a gay man on YouTube, homosexual gay on YouTube, and and it held me back in life dealing with that, and I st I stole a lot, and that was they were also not great, but I was trying to buy drugs, but it was hard so to have the bravery to be gay on YouTube, gay, <laughs> to be gay on YouTube. And so, and to support the Ukraine, unquest. I don't even know. I don't question it at all. Every dollar I make, half of it, I, I should go to the Ukraine because I'm gay. YouTube on being gay in the Ukraine, which is something I would love to. I would love to be gay in the Ukraine <laughs> if I could. And the only way I can is if they win that fucker. So. That's all I wanted to say starting off the show. I love the new Little Mermaid. It's not black enough. <laughs> to be honest with you, it's not black enough. The new Little Mermaid, it's actually not. I want it to be even blacker. And and I she has a lovely voice, that girl that's singing. It's beautiful. Um, but I think it could have even went, you know, to where it's almost uncomfortable for everyone. And that's what I wanted. Um but that's all I have to say to because I'm here now on YouTube and I'm and I and I and I support Fran Drescher to the the person who's doing this writer strike I do and the SAG she's the in in the the union that I'm in the Screen Actors Guild Fran Drescher who if you remember it was in a show called The Nanny and she was the star of the show she was The Nanny and she is now the president of the Screen Actors Guild. And it's a great injustice what's happening right now. And I'm a little disappointed that Americans don't care about the, the, the trouble that actors and writers are having not making any money. Americans are like, hey, they're, they're, they're of the attitude. It's like, hey, fuck you. And all you make is crap that we don't want to watch. But that's not true. There's a few things that you like that could go away if this doesn't get rectified. There are. Those big budget Marvel movies you all like, you slumber into the theater like a herd of cattle <laughs> and buy a bucket of soda with your kids and eat little hot dog donuts. They're going away. Hey, that's going away. <laughs> It's not just succession. Some of the things you like are go the movies where cats talk to each other. You like that. That's out too. <laughs> All the films where cats and dogs speak because Americans like, well, they like that. Yeah. They like when cats and dogs speak to each other because they can in real life. But in the movies, they can't, and people like it. So some of those things that American like, and they like uh, movies of, what is that, F The Fast and Furious, where they keep stealing all the cars, they keep taking cars every year in some other desert. And that can go away. It's not just the, the faggoty things that your, you know, 
brother-in-law watches on the BBC, which is not affected <laughs> by the, it, but there's some actual real explosions that may not happen because of this strike. So you should, you should get mad at this. And I, you know, I famously here see everyone's point with the strike. I do. Because I, I think people should get paid fairly. But then I look at what's happening. And I look, 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 let's take a look at Snow White. Snow White is a movie that is coming out now. It is a Disney film. It, is, it should be a hit. Snow White, who could have more name recognition than Snow White? Everybody knows what Snow White is about. It is about a, a woman or a girl who is tempted with a witch who gives her an apple. Is that correct? Mm -hmm. That is correct. After that, I don't, but it's, there's a wolf too. But <laughs> everyone knows about it. It's big. And it should just, these things, these remakes should just kill. There should be no, it should be on, if you don't fuck this stuff up, it should be easy. Snow White, get a wolf, get a bitch, get a witch. You're done. Get a prince, probably. Now, Snow White, you would think this would be the perfect time to employ Little people, not using the other M word, I'm on YouTube and I'm gay, <laughs> but I'm using the word little people. Now you would think these are, this is seven little actors can work. Seven little actors can now work. You would think, right? Wrong. Wrong. Disney's live action Snow White under fire for replacing seven dwarfs with, quote, Magical creatures of all sizes and genders. This, again, was the one opportunity for little people <laughs> to have their moment in the sun, other than that role on Game of Thrones that he killed Peter Dinklage. But now, seven people get to have a potential shot. And what do they do? Get, make, that, make that screen bigger. Look at this freak show <laughs> that they have. First of all, these are not dwarfs. There's only one dwarf. The rest of them look unkempt. They look homeless. They look diseased. This, you could have accomplished this by going to Seattle and grabbing seven heroin addicts <laughs> that were living <laughs> under a fucking bridge. This is scary. This does not look like something kids would like. I, you should have little cherubic-like people. That's what dwarfs are. They're tiny, somewhat chubby, hardy, hardworking people. This is like a fucking unemployment line of scum. <laughs> Every person here, I couldn't... What are they wearing? What are they dressed? What is this? Why are you destroying everything? This is so easy to not fuck up. You can have black little people. There's nothing wrong with that. Get all the little people of all the races, but they need to be little. Why are you, why are you, why is the guy in the middle with long hair being hired? What group is he in? Let me see why they're doing it because they're trying to modernize these movies. And they're destroying everything. And this is one of the reasons it's hard to get people to care about this strike because they have turned on the business. They don't enjoy the things that are being made anymore. They don't care. And if, if you don't get them to care, you lose that popular support. Let's find out. Okay, quote, literally no offense to anyone, but I was a little taken back when they were very proud to make this bigger, when they were very proud to cast a Latina actress as Snow White, which by the way, it's fine. That's fine. No one cares, okay? But you're still telling the story of Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs, he said in January 2022. I don't know who's saying that. Um, you're progressive in one way, but then you're still making that fucking backward story about seven dwarfs living in a cave together. What the fuck are you doing, man? Have I done nothing to advance the cause for my soapbox? I guess I'm not loud enough. 
In response, Disney said it was taking, quote, a different approach to avoid reinforcing stereotypes. Well, it's about... <laughs> Christ almighty. So find out who said that, because they ruined the whole fucking movie. One guy said it. Somebody had a problem with that they were making a movie with seven dwarves. By the way, what? I don't even understand the negative stereotypes about dwarfs in the movie. That they work hard. First of all, if you remember, the dwarfs were not painted as one thing. There was sleepy, happy. Uh, there was a few of them. Jewy. There were a few different dwarfs. And I forget what they did and who they were, but they each had a specific personality and a specific thing that they did. Nobody was saying that, like, all the dwarfs are one thing. Is it... But. All that they they were just they worked hard, right? That was what we knew them for that they were workers. Why is that such a bad idea? Why is that a what what stereotype is being reinforced that they live in a cave? I'm I'm so curious. Dinklage. Oh, this is Peter Dinklage. You know, I gotta be honest. I'm not happy about this, and I don't want to go to war with him. But it's really like, what if there was a if there was a uh, if there was a Disney film called Snow White and the Fat Faggots, if there was, no, I'm saying if there was, I'm not saying there is. If there was, <laughs> and it was seven fat faggots that were m like myself, kind of loud and vicious. Number one, better movie. Number two, <laughs> why would I comply? I wouldn't complain about. Like, what is he complaining about? Does Peter Dinklage not like that there are dwarfs? Does he not want them to? I don't know. I'm confused, man. He doesn't like the portrayal of the disability in the. In What's the, the disability? Well, as what though? This is what I'm trying to understand, and maybe he could help me understand this because maybe I'm not understanding why he's mad, and maybe he's mad for a very legitimate reason. All I'm understanding is that there are people that are little. Maybe they don't like the word dwarf, but they are littler than other people, right? Mm -hmm. And Snow White befriends them. Right. What's the problem? Uh, I'm, I mean, I don't know. Can you articulate why he's upset? If I were guessing, maybe he doesn't want his, his culture to be a Disney character. Dwarf culture. I, I just, here's the thing, man. Then don't make it. Or Disney's got to tell him, fuck you. Someone's got to tell him, fuck you, Peter. Hey, fuck you. <laughs> you know how many little, like, he's taking, here's what Peter Dinklage is doing. He's taking the food out of a little woke mouth, of those little mouths that could be eating. Peter Dinklage is stealing food out of their mouth. <laughs> There's seven, here's what Peter Dinklage is saying. I'm the only one that can be famous. <laughs> Just me. <laughs> Sorry, everybody. We're shutting that down. You know how I was a dwarf in Game of Thrones? That's cool. Everyone else, we're closing the little bridge. The little bridge is going up, and no one can cross over it now because I'm already rich. So now there's seven scumbags that are going to be in this movie when there were seven actors that have probably been working their asses off. This is the fucking... Like, I would like to play the Cheshire Cat. That's like a Disney role for me that <laughs> yeah. I'd love to play because it smokes and it's, it's, it's kind of nasty. And, yeah. but, and, and you can tell it's like, it's like just, it's like, it, 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 it like cares about what's going on, you know? Like, it, it's kind of co cognizant of what's happening. Yeah, I like the Cheshire Cat. It's, it, and so this would be my role. It, th this would be my role. This is what I would like to do if I was, in, if I was involved. If Bob Iger called me today... If he called me today, he'd probably try to get me to kill Fran Drescher. But if he called me today, he'd be like, they'd give Ray Kump a gun. They'd be like, Bob Iger hands Ray Kump a gun. He goes, do the right thing, Ray. Listen, what, what? Do it. Do the right thing. She's causing all kinds of problems, Ray. But so the Cheshire Cat is a role for me where I would go, God damn it, I want to be in that. We're, we're getting ridiculous, man. So now we have Snow White and the seven homeless people. Look at that. If I saw that crew, I would go nuts. Mm -hmm. They're going to destroy the company. Bob Iger is a good CEO. He cannot let this happen. 
They're going to destroy it. Now, The Little Mermaid, she was a great talent. She had a great voice. But every one of her sisters was a different race. It was, like, weird. Like, one was, like, a Romanian gypsy, and the other one, it's, like, it didn't make any sense. So a lot of this stuff, it, it, by its very nature, doesn't make sense to anybody. We don't get it. So I'm just saying that it was a, it, it's a real issue what's happening right now with the strike. Now, get up, Fran Drescher. Like, what? what is, I? because I am on strike now. I am, I, and I want to show up to the picket lines, and I want to show the support because I am striking. I won't work right now unless I'm paid, and I have some of my own demands that are outside of the strike. I'm going rogue. This is uh, Fran Drescher the other day giving a speech about the strike. Yes, let's see it. I want to see it. You cannot change the business model. Here we go. As now, by the way, what's great about her, they're all acting all the time. <laughs> this is the most... In now, I agree with a lot of what they want. Some of it, I think, is unrealistic. The studios will not budge on AI and, you know, maybe not the size of writer's rooms. I do think they'll pay them more. I do think the residuals, they'll come to the table on that. But here's why it's the most insufferable strike in the world. Everyone is acting. Mm -hmm. Like when air traffic controllers go on strike, they're not acting. You know, these, I mean, there's a strike every other day here in New York. There's a, an inflatable rent-a-rat, some unions picketing, the local whatever, they got the signs. The reason this strike is very, uh, it's disgusting to people and grotesque is because all the people in it are, at, like when Ron Perelman was like, Ron Perlman, you know him, the guy who plays a Hellboy and all that other stuff? He's like, because supposedly it leaked out that a studio head said, we're, we're, we're just going to let them lose their houses. We're going we're gonna to bleed them out. We're going to let these writers and these, and on my Patreon, I talk a lot more about this in, in a little bit of detail. But he goes, basically, we're going to let them die. And he lose house. So now Ron Perlman came back and he's like, there's a lot of way to lose your fucking house, brother. Like he did like a thing where he's like, there's a lot of way to, there's a lot of ways to lose your house. Basically a threat going, there's a lot of ways to lose your house. Like maybe I'll burn it down. Maybe I'll kill you. But he's an actor. He's not doing anything. He's kind of a puss. He's an actor. No offense. He could probably kill me, but he's not burning down Bob Iger's house. You, you, you it's just not what he is. So they're all doing shit like that. They're all do. They're all gonna go like a but. There's a. There's a lot of ways to lose a house. Don't you don't want. It's like you're not the thing you pretend to be. Just focus in and try to get a good deal hammered out. She's also losing her mind now. Remember, we like and I respect Fran Drescher, um, but these people have not acted in a while, and it shows. Let's go to Fran. <laughs> it has changed and not expect the contract to change too. We're not going to keep doing incremental changes on a contract that no longer honors what is happening right now with this business model that was foisted upon us. Can someone write this for what her, by the way? Doing? <laughs> Moving can someone, can Titanic? someone, stop it. Can someone write this down for her? <laughs> because she looks like erratic and she doesn't know what's going on. And this is not a good communication strategy. I understood this is the way that they think actors. They're all like, it's got to be all over the place. She's like, the business model is changing. But it's like, you get just let's, let's hammer out points. Couple of points. Couple of key points. Point one, point two, point three, point four. Not this, I'm all over the place. I'm screaming and yelling. She looks like she's about to break out in a song. <laughs> the studios are lying. It's like you got to, you know, you got to just, a little composure goes a long way. And I say that as a member of SAG who is striking, who should be heard. I, I have a strike platform and it's controversial. And my strike platform, and a lot of people aren't going to like it. My strike platform is... Give the studios 90% of what they want. <laughs> Let's take 10%. And many people do not like that. But I say, give the studios 90%. I, I, Let's take 10. Let's take 10. And that has been defeated. I have been called a scab. I have been called a bootlicker for billionaires. Because I have just suggested, it was a mild suggestion, giving the studios 90% of what they want. 
taking the lowest earning members of SAG and putting them in not a slave program, but a <laughs> like an indentured servant, kind of working, maybe like a mentorship thing. And of course, I have been attacked for that. But no, it's at the end of the day, the ho- Hollywood and, and the machine is going to shrink now. It has to. There's 600 shows. Nobody's watching a lot of them. There's a lot of people trying to make a living as an actor or a writer. It's not sustainable. Shows like mine cost a lot less to produce than these shows. We have more people watching this than a lot of the shows that are being produced by streamers for millions and millions and millions of dollars. Long term, the sustainability of the business model is being called into question. And of course, the streamers are being shitty to writers and actors. They always have been. Um, And let's see how much leverage the writers and actors have. I'd like to see them hammer out a good deal. I've offered to kind of go in and and negotiate, but they're not giving up on AI. If every industry in the world is using AI, (laughs) Hollywood's not going to take a moral stand. This is the business that raped children and threw women uh, (laughs) into the fire pits when they spoke up about anything except a couple of years ago. They're not going to be the ones to take a moral stand about AI. Like, they're not going to be like, well, you know, we don't, we care about humans and we don't want to displace any human beings. No, they're trying to accelerate AI so much that they never have to see another actor and writer again. And I'm sure they would love that. Um, so so you'll, you'll, you'll have to figure out somewhere that the business that we can live... And people that are working in this business that where their labor is getting rewarded in a way that they can feel comfortable with. That's the serious angle of it. But there are things you're not going to win on these certain things. You can't keep ruining everything with this crap where you're hiring people based on race, sexuality, gender, and not level of talent. And I'm not saying you can't find both. But if you're going to do this thing where you're going to remake movies so that they're morality tales where people can learn lessons, they're just fucking not going to watch them. You're not, they're not going to care. Do you know who is Snow White, by the way? Do you know who's the new Snow White? Uh, Dylan Mulvaney. <laughs> Dylan Mulvaney is Snow White. <laughs> because nobody learns. Nobody learns a lesson. Dylan Mulvaney is coming as Snow White with the seven magical gender creatures. She's coming to a screen near you. Let's finish up with Fran. She looks very angry. She's got to look. The thing is, you got to look a little cooler. Start. You got to. I, I feel like you got to turn it down. It's 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 too much. If I I would say cut, cut. Too much. Just take a little less. A little. Fran. No, we get it. We understand you. You got ups, people are yelling at you because you took a photo with Kim Kardashian in Italy, and people don't think you're <laughs> they don't think you're in the cause. But we just you we, we just need you to tone it down a little bit and get a hairbrush. Continue. It's crazy. Is it? So the jig is up, AMPTP. That's right. We stand tall. That's right. You have to wake up and smell the coffee. I like that you one. Cannot- coffee. <laughs> She had, to, she had to find a way to get the word coffee in there. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe she'll use water, too. The water sigh. The coffee. You better smell the coffee. We're on the water here. Sag. Sag. 87% of people in Sag make less than $26,000 a year that cannot even qualify for health insurance. 26000 is... The SAG minimum to qualify for health insurance. There is so much inequality in the entertainment business, right? You know, even though it's, quote, a progressive and liberal business, it's an insane amount of inequality. And uh, they got to figure something out. But it's also a tough business because who's really in it? How much do you have to do to be in the fucking business, right? You can't just show up and say, I'm a writer, I'm an actor, I'm a comedian. It takes years of hard work, unpaid you got to figure it out. You hop from gig to gig to gig to carve out a career. It's not a regular business. It doesn't operate like that. It's not a job creation business. Their, their job is not to create jobs for people. Their job is to find the most talented people that are trying to do this and give them opportunities. Or that was their job, and that should still be their job. I support everyone involved here. I support SAG, I support the WGA, 
I support uh, Big Daddy Zaz, David Zasloff. I support Bobby Iger over at Disney. I support Ted Sarandos at Netflix. Call me. I support every, all the CEOs. I support the writers and the CEOs because you know what? We're all human beings. We're human beings. It doesn't matter if you make a billion dollars or a ten dollars. We all bleed red blood. So I can't, it's hard for me to choose between the people that have the, all the billionaires and the people that I personally know in my own life I don't really like. But I, I agree with the writers, and in, in theory, I just don't want to have to see them or talk to them. <laughs> because now they're all trying to do stand-up. God, is that a mess? So shout out to Big Daddy Zaz. I, I, I support you. You're going to have to fold. These streamers are going to have to fold a little bit, but I like what they're doing in the moment because it's like nobody wants to see anybody fold quickly. I think there should be a long strike with a lot of violence. I think the violence should go both ways. I think there should be people getting, I think people like Fran Drescher should walk around with armed security. I think there should be a lot of egg throwing and pies. I think there should be like real like blood on the street. I think there should be lamb's blood on the door. I think that's good. Now I'm not advocating for any of that. I'm not telling anyone to do it. Strictly as someone who's watching this, it would be nice to see a very Hollywood strike. Like, make let's make it a Hollywood strike. <laughs> let's make it what the movies aren't. Fun and watchable. <laughs> I that's what I would hope. That's what I would hope. That's all. Like, is there a version of Fran Drescher that smacks Big Daddy's ass in the face? Does she spit at Bob Iger? And does Bob, uh, does Bob Iger just fucking go at her? You know, I don't know how it works, folks. I'm just saying that's my goal. My goal is that uh, it is a very watch. And then hopefully it ends. The pole dancing convention has left Florida. Ron DeSantis, who I think is a little bit of a hysteric um, about the G L G B L L L G B L S D L G B T Q I A two stuff. I think he's a little bit of a hysteric. Although I do, and I've uh, talked about many times that I think the L G B T whatever community they're also losing their minds now, and they're inv- it's a big tent now, and it's, they're inviting a lot of people in. But this was sad to me because you know that I am a fan of, um, you know. I like reasonable people, rational people. Polcon moves the 2024 convention away from Florida, citing drag ban and anti-LGBTQ laws. Polcon, a popular pole dancing convention, has decided to move its 2024 convention out of Florida, citing the state's anti-LGBTQ laws. Let's get to the article here. In an interview with Insider, Colleen Jolly, the C- no way that's her name, but the CEO <laughs> and owner of PolCon said she thought she'd hope to hold the convention in Orlando due to the size of the poll community there. Keeping the convention inclusive for LGBTQ plus attendees meant moving it, she said. Quote, unfortunately, a growing number of states are making these really broad laws in the name of protecting children, but they're not protecting children at all. They're just about controlling and harming transit queer folks. Jolly told Insider the convention needs to be moved because a small contingent of its attendees are under 18 years old. The 1,300-person event typically sells less than 10 tickets to minors accompanied by their parents. So what they're, they're, here's the deal. The idea that Florida is trying to make itself a state where minors cannot pole dance is insane. (laughs) It's, no, it's frankly disgusting. I, my, because it is a sport, pole dancing. It's an art. My cousin and her children visited my Hamptons estate recently. It's not an estate. It is compared to you, unless you're someone, you know. Here's the point. My cousin and her uh, children were at my house. The first thing I asked, and I forget their ages, seven or eight or whatever, who cares? Sweet kids. First thing I asked, are they pole dancing? (laughs) Are they pole dancing? No, it's true. Are they pole dancing? Because it is a great, number one, it's exercise. So many of these kids are fat. Get them on the pole. 
get them on the poll, Young. So Florida is trying to make itself a state that does not welcome families who want to attend PollCon. <laughs> families of people. Usually, here's the deal. Despite that, because the Florida law prohibits children from attending adult live performances, which includes drag shows and some pole dancers performing clothing that does not match their gender assigned at birth. So if you want to take your children to see pole dancing drag queens in Florida, you're not allowed to do it. And that saddens me. If you want to take your children to Florida and instead of going to Disney World, you want to take them to pole con so they can watch pole dancing and maybe learn to be a pole dancer. What if your child is a drag pole dancer? This is people are born the way they're born. What if your child is a 10 year old who comes to you and says, I am a drag queen and you go, I support you and you go, hold on. I am also a pole dancer. And I want to go to pole con in Florida where I can dress in drag, and dance on a pole with my friends. I want to dance on a pole with my friends in drag. <laughs> and if you're a parent, you have to look at your child and go, honey, yes, for Christmas this year, right after we get home from mass, I will buy two tickets to PoleCon so that me or three will bring your father and we'll all go down together and your father will li- will watch you pole dance. Because this is crazy. This is a big thing for a lot of families. This might be the new Disney World in 20 years in our country. There might be more people going to PoleCon. PoleCon maintains that parents should make the decisions for their children for which showcases and workshops to attend during PoleCon. Right! Jolly wrote in a blog post discussing the decision to move the convention. This is not about drag. It never was. It's like, here's the deal. If you take your kids to PolCon, you have to decide what is important for them to see and what's not. Some performances highlight black and Latino online perform, uh, 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 Latinx performers, while others have performers from the LGBTQ plus community. Other showcases are specifically for younger attendees to perform at. Other showcases are specifically for younger attendees to perform at. So that's when... That's for the kids who want to uh, do pole dancing. I mean, if you're a cisgender straight person, you're probably not paying attention to these laws because it. I mean, listen, here's the reality. It's one of those there, but for the grace of God, go I things. First, they came for kids who are pole dancing. And you know what I mean? <laughs> and then what's next? The, the, the reason I have this article, I do think DeSantis is wants to make the country into a Christian theocracy, which I'm sure some people love, uh, that idea. Of course, those people rape more children than anyone. That being said, you know, the Catholic Church, that we'd be closing down those. Um, that being said, this is insane. Who is right? Who is taking children to a pole dancing convention in Florida? It's the craziest thing I've ever heard. And I read this article. I'm like, this is fucking uh, a madhouse. So I do think... Um, this does not help the case of anyone. I was reading this and they're like, DeSantis's laws are targeting. And then I read it and I'm like, oh, it's a pole, it's pole dance. It's like people that <laughs> yeah. want their children to pole dance are apparently upset about it. About, about it. I'm not saying, well, I don't know if you should ban that. I think it's a bad idea for kids to start tinkering with puberty. It's a very bad idea. Should it be banned in all cases? I don't know. There's probably some extreme cases. Um, but I, you know, again, I just think this is funny that the example being used is a pole dancing convention in Florida where people are uh, taking their children to uh, pole dancing in Florida. Robert De Niro's grandson, and I, t- I touched on this in the Patreon, very sad, died uh, by taking um, a pill that was a Percocet and that it had fentanyl in it. Now, they're saying that fentanyl is in 90% of drugs in New York City right now. It's crazy. He was sold this drug by a 20-year-old girl named Haley what? Sophia Haley Marks. Sophia Haley Marks called the Percocet Princess. We cannot find one photo of her online. Here is my conspiracy theory. I think 
She might be the daughter of somebody wealthy. Could that be? Is that possible? Percocet Princess, who allegedly sold Robert De Niro's grandson drugs that led to his suspected overdose, warned him, literally, I don't want to kill you. That's what she said. But then she sold him the fentanyl lace pills. She's being held without bail on federal narcotics charges in Manhattan after selling fake oxycodone and Xanax with fentanyl in them to Leonardo De Niro Rodriguez, 19, RIP. He did not make it. Very sad. Um, Rodriguez first texted Marks on June 30th asking him to buy, quote, 30s, blue counterfeit oxycodone stamp with the number, and she allegedly replied that they are potentially dangerous. Do you really need them? Marks replied, according to the criminal complaint. I don't want to kill you. I don't like serving you because they're not script, meaning not prescription grade. But she served him anyway, and now, sadly, tragically, he died. And uh, this is one of those stories that, you know, makes you really think that, um, you know, if you need, if you're out there and you're struggling with drugs, you got to get help because there's too much shit on the street right now that can kill you. And not over a long period of time. We're talking pretty instantaneously. You take one Percocet, I used to take Percocet and I never thought and I never felt that I was in danger from taking Percocet. I thought it was just a fun way to start a morning and it's a good way to kind of get into the day. You drive to work, you scratch a little bit, you get an itch, but you know, Percocet uh, to me was never like, oh, you're going to die. Vicodin was never like, oh, you're going to drop dead. Oxys are a different story. Certainly oxys that are laced with fentanyl are a different story. A lot of kids right now are taking very severe and serious drugs and dropping dead, and it's fucking very sad, and I don't know what's going to happen to this chick. I don't know what's going to happen to her, but she's probably going to have to go to jail for a long time. She's going to have to go to jail, but I don't know if that's going to happen in this state. They might put her right back out on the street. But we talked about on the on the bonus episode, like, what would they do in Singapore? How would they handle it? They would hang her in Singapore. They would hang her. And I'm not saying that that should happen. But that's interesting. <laughs> if, you, if you wanted to clean up society, like, really quickly, interesting. That's all I'm saying. Interesting. Cocaine, speaking of drugs, they found cocaine in the White House a couple of weeks ago, or about a week ago, and it's it's 1,000% hunters. There's no way it's not hunter. There's zero way it's not Hunter Biden's coke. Zero. Look at Hunter Biden. Get the video up of him on the White House. He's on a balcony, and he does what every cokehead does, who's like sweating and... They don't quite know what to do with their hands. He's a little manic, and he he puts his hand through his hair. He's he's still actively using drugs. I'm going to go out there and say it. I have no proof of this, but it doesn't matter. Hunter Biden is still using drugs. Let's look at the Mr. Sober right here. <laughs> so this is an event at the White House where Hunter Biden, I'm telling you right now, he's high on cocaine. You don't have to believe me. Yeah, he's high on cocaine. He adjusts his nose right there, too. You see that? Yes, because he's doing cocaine. And they know Jill knows. And there's another, get it? There's another video of him as well. Like, look, here he is. Yeah. <laughs> there he is. He's still, there he is. There he goes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, he's getting, now where's he going? Where's he going? Where's he off to? Where is he going? Okay, I'll see you later. Then he goes with the wife, and now he's out. Where is he going? The party's on the deck right there. Right? Isn't that, isn't that where the party is? Where's he going? Why is he leaving his face? His entire family, including the president and the first lady, are standing on that balcony. The party's on the balcony, hunty baby. Where's 
he off to? Could I guess? <laughs> He's still on drugs. And this is uh, unfortunate. This is unfortunate. He probably knows that uh, Percocet princess. She's probably on his laptop. Um, but no, there, there's there's no way he's not. And by the way, I would also be on drugs if we were trying to present my father, who's riddled with dementia, as a, an appropriate candidate for the press. I mean, it's great. You got to think about, he never ran. I mean, the level of fraud you have to engage in, forget politics, to just pretend that Joe Biden is a functioning adult. The level of censorship you have to engage in is North Korean draconian censorship Bottom up, top down, everybody's got to be silent. You got to go at everybody, random comedians, slash somebody here, demonetize, age gate it, make people sign in. You got to really chip away at people's free expression because this is a guy that's clearly, you know, have it in some state of cognitive decline. And his son is there doing cocaine, and Jill doesn't look happy. Jill doesn't know what's going on. And Hunter is fiddling with his nose. If I was Hunter, I would never touch my nose. Just because even if I had an itch, I would know the implication. The implication is, is bad. And I wouldn't leave anywhere. If everybody was on the balcony with the kids, I would stay on the balcony with the kids. I would not leave because I was an addict. It took me years and years and years to get over that. When people look at you, where you going? How have you been? You know you're an addict when for Christmas, instead of getting cash, you start to get gift cards. <laughs> gift cards mean that your family thinks you're a junkie. Now, maybe not anymore because it's more digital and those are more common, but back then they were not as common. It was the, the first generation of gift cards to come out. And everybody was like, oh, Timmy's having problems. Give him a gift card. You can go buy a CD at the wall. <laughs> Here's a gift card to Sam Goody. And, of course, we'd use them to cut Coke up. Who can, <laughs> you know, we ain't going to stop us. But it takes a long time after you've reestablished yourself to gain the trust back of people. Now, imagine you had documented every bad thing you had ever done on a laptop Every hooker you ever fucked with a gun to her head, driving, you know, at crazy speeds, whatever he's, whatever he's documented on his uh, laptop, okay? He will never in his lifetime, in 10 lifetimes, he will never be trusted again. This is a man who hooked up with his dead brother's ex. He will never be trusted again. This will never happen. Never, ever, 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 ever. He knows that. He knows he'll never get it back. The trust, he will ne he will be, and it's unfortunate, but he'll be looked at as some type of crackhead forever. So someone like that in his situation, it seems like, you know, the motivation for them to stop is, is, is low because he knows it's hard to get it back. And he knows whatever scams they were running with Burisma, that energy company in the Ukraine, they can't do that anymore. Everything's out in the open. He knows that. Speaking of the Ukraine and Russia, we're now sending cluster bombs. We're sending cluster bombs to the Ukraine. This is a good idea. Cluster bombs, cluster bombs to the Ukraine. Um, Russia will also use cluster bombs, by the way. Vladimir Putin warned on Sunday that Moscow has, quote, sufficient reserves of its own cluster munitions. <laughs> 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 yeah, baby. So if you haven't paid attention yet, we'll sum it up for you. We do not want this war to end. We are scared the Russia-Ukraine war is the Defense Department SAG after strike. They do not want it to end. They're not coming to the table. They don't care. They're upping the ante. Here's cluster bombs. They know Russia's got cluster bombs. As long as people are dying and people are building weapons, they win. That's all they're concerned about. The minute things start to look 
like they could be moving in a direction of peace, we will stop that. We will get in the way of that big time. Um, There's absolutely, we have zero interest in that. Ukraine could use an increasing number of cluster bombs as its stockpiles of conventional shells run low. As it looks, so Ukraine is no longer winning the war. For a while they were, now they are not. You know, Putin goes, we have our own cluster munitions. You know, if they do something, we're going to do something. If they do it, we'll do it. And this is going to be a failed state. It's probably going to be a frozen conflict, meaning like nobody actually has a decisive victory. Hard to win the war, hard to win the peace. And it just becomes a perpetually dysfunctional state. And the war kind of goes on and it sucks up time and resources until, I guess, one of those governments is potentially overthrown and somebody comes in there. I, I don't know. I don't know. But I just think that it's just, it's it's funny now because we started this just like COVID. We were like, two weeks, we'll stop the spread, we'll slow it, it's fine. We started this going like, yeah, well, we're supporting the Ukraine They were invaded by a hostile country, which is true. Absolutely true. And now we're like, let's give them jets. Let's give them cluster bombs. Let's get it. Let's get it going over there. Let's get it going. And um, it's unfortunate. It's unfortunate. And uh, I just, I would say um, that I no longer have a, like, I no longer, I'm not going to keep bringing it up. I will just let whatever's going to go down over there, it's just going to go down. And it's not, I'm not going to focus too much time and attention on it um, because it's, it's actually supposed to go away. You're not supposed to think about it. The goal is to just, it's to be put away and it's just that thing over there that happens where we give them all the money and the weapons uh, to, and there's more death happening, but we can't think about it. We've got our own issues like the uh, SAG strike. So we got to focus on things that matter, like are the dwarves and Snow White being objectified um, and just keep giving cluster bombs over to the Ukraine. Uh, Check Drudge. I wanted to talk about something on Drudge, too, uh, that is uh, just happening. Summer is, is, uh, is getting hotter right now. I mean, I think the temperature in Vegas, when I'm going to be there on Saturday... For the uh, win, the Encore Theater at the win, it's going to be 115 degrees. How fucking insane is that? Vegas, this is one of the hottest summers ever. How are people coping with this heat? How is it happening? Heat wave reaching right there, max strength, uh, uh, 128 degrees, peak. This is insane. The energy grids of these states are being pushed to the limits, and I don't know if they're going to fail or not. It's interesting to kind of see if an energy grid fails, you're looking at severe problems. You're looking at a lot of people losing their lives. Death Valley, people are still going to be tourists in Death Valley, California. It's like the hottest place on Earth, I think one year they got it. It's like 128 degrees. It's just an arid hellscape. The only thing that survives there is like tarantulas and lizards. It's a very, very hot part of California. And people are still going. They're flocking there for a tourism. Because it's inexpensive. It's cheap. People go, sure, I'd rather, I'd rather die. Climate change gawking thrives as tourists flock to Death Valley with temperatures at 128 degrees. So, by the way, this is what I talk about, disaster tourism. Literally, this is something I talked about was going to happen. I said this was going to happen. People are finding the fun in in the decaying planet. And this is kind of cool. It is kind of fun. It is fun to go out and see, like, how bad it's getting. And everybody is smiling. Look at that. Make that video big. She's smiling. They're happy. That's fun. Look, it's 133 degrees. Smile. That's fun. Ladies and gentlemen, so many people are having problems right now illegally with legality. It's a litigious society. And you have to sue. 
you have to sue, and you have to sue others that have hurt you, maimed you in any way. You have to sue them in their face. Call them and sue them. Sue them right now. Sue them till they're dead. Wake up every day and call a lawyer and sue. It's the only way to really feel fully American is to be in a law. I know several people in lawsuits right now and they feel great. Sue them. And you know, well, you go, oh, well, I don't know how to sue people. Yeah, I do. It's called Morgan and Morgan. It's a law firm. It's the biggest personal injury law firm in the fucking world. Morgan and Morgan. It's called suing people that fuck you up. <laughs> you don't take it lying down. <laughs> if you fall, if you you're if you fall, you were tripped. If you slip, it was done to you. If you stumble, that's somebody else, baby, and they need to pay. <laughs> If somebody hits you with their car, it's intentional. You need to get them. Go get them. Go get them good. Go get them good with Morgan & Morgan. If you are ever injured, check out Morgan & Morgan. Their fee is free unless they win. For more information, go to forthepeople.com slash Tim or dial pound law, pound 529. That's forthepeople.com, Tim, or dial pound law. It's 529. F-O-R, thepeople.com slash Tim. You know why? Because they're not going to get away with it this time. No more say a prayer. No more, well, we're not that hurt. No more, it could have been worse. No more, we'll do better next time. Get them now. Call the lawyers. Light them on fire. Drag them to court. Drag their ass to court now. Sue them. Sue the fuck out of them. That's what you do. Oh, your wife goes, well, it actually could have been a lot worse. Shut the fuck up, you stupid bitch. We're suing them every day until we die. Go to forthepeople.com slash Tim and dial pound law. It's pound 529. This is a paid advertisement. So many online e-commerce businesses right now are struggling with shipping. They don't know how to do it. Maybe you have a business selling your unique art, or maybe you're selling antiques, or maybe you're selling anything, and you need to focus on, on acquiring new customers. You need to focus on the artistic and creative side of your business. Well, who's going to come around and run the back office? Who's going to run the back office? Who's going to make sure that all your clients and customers are happy? that all their shipping needs are being met. Who's going to make sure that you get the best prices? Who's going to do it? Not your husband, because he's dead. That's why you have this business, selling pine cones you found in your attic. <laughs> That's why you go to ShipStation. If you go to ShipStation.com and you use the code Tim Dillon, T-I-M-D-I-L-L-O-N, all of a sudden, you have this effortless integration everywhere you sell online, including Amazon, Etsy, eBay, Shopify, and more. Manage every order from one simple dashboard. Print shipping labels. Easily compare rates and delivery times to optimize every shipment. Automate delivery. It shouldn't be driving you nuts. You should be focusing on the stuff that makes you money. Finding the pine cone and making it a Christmas tree. You paint it and you dip it in glitter. <laughs> and then you sell it to people so they can give it to their autistic children. But what you need to do, there's nothing wrong with that. But what you need to do is focus on the back orders, the back office. I mean, you not you don't need to focus on that. You need to hire ship station to do the back office while you dip pine cones in glitter so people can give it to their kids. Because that's your job, it's your business. Because your husband's dead, and he left you with a lot of debt. But people like little things. ShipStation.com, code Tim Dillon. ShipStation.com, code Tim Dillon. ShipStation.com, slash Tim Dillon. Get a 60-day free trial? Are you serious? Go fuck your mother. 
60 day free trial at shipstation.com slash Tim Dillon. Shipstation.com slash Tim Dillon. Go do it now. Don't be stupid. Honor your husband's memory. So I wanted to talk about this too. This is a uh, this woman Becky Pringle, who is the uh, head of the NEA, the National Education Association. Uh, I guess she's their president, Mm -hmm. and she is. And this is, you know, I hate. I don't want to be the one that predicts the future here. I don't want to be the person who constantly calls out uh, that I was that I'm always right because I don't want to be right. You know, because the things I predict are not good. All you know, usually. And I predicted a while ago that people were going to start having mental breakdowns in public and they were going to start being rewarded for them. This is a big thing that I had. This is a big um, theme that I was saying that people that need immediate help, that need to be put into an ambulance and sent to a home, are instead going to be applauded and lionized as a sort of visionary and a genius. And this is part of society's breakdown where you have some people that are clearly unwell, but they are being celebrated um, for it. And it's, 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 and the people that are unwell, it's not even like they're doing it as a con. They don't even know. They're as shocked as anyone that they're being celebrated for how insane they are. And they just go with it. It's like anything. If you lose your mind and people start clapping and going, you're, you lead us. You are our savior. Lead us. You go, okay. So this is the the head of the National Education Association who's clearly unwell. There's no other way to put this. This is a someone who's lost it, and she's being uh, applauded for it. Uh, if if someone in my organization displayed uh, this type of behavior, I would be, be incredibly concerned. Let's take a look. I can hear Chief Seattle crying out to us, urging us to remember when you know who you are, when your mission is clear and you burn with the inner fire of an unbreakable will. No cold can touch your heart. No deluge can dampen your purpose. And yay, you are those stars in the darkness. Your light will not be dimmed. Your purpose will drive you in a righteous fight for freedom because you know who you are. That's right. Yes. You know who you are. You are the NEA. Our mission is clear. We for the rights of education professionals and we will change this world for our students with that inner fire burning we will never bend we will never be broken because we are the NEA and we will always always do what we must to be worthy of our students Thank you, NEA, for all you do every day for our babies and for our colleagues and for your states and for this country. Onward, NEA. Onward. She, like, did the Hitler salute at the end. (laughs) She really got into it. Yeah, I mean, this is, uh, it's uh, crazy. This is a type of behavior now. We're seeing it with Fran. We're seeing it here. We're seeing a type of hysteria that is be, a, a certain uh, a mania, manic behavior that is being mainstreamed in American society and applauded and celebrated. People like this, and they go, this is good. Um, and, and no one knows what this woman is talking about. She's saying these very uh, deep meaningful things, but there are no specifics anymore about anything. If you've noticed, specifics have been driven out of the national conversation about most topics. Most topics, uh, we no longer discuss anything in specifics. It's like, the night is long! It's like, it is, what, what, are we, what are you saying? What's happening? You know, Fran Drescher is, you know, d- doing her whole thing, and you go, yeah, but what, explain to me what this means. Tell me, uh, word for word, 
what we're trying to do or trying to accomplish. And it it just feels like we're, we're getting away from that. We're just like completely divorced from any specifics. We're just, it's a, um, sort of a performance that is uh, unfortunate. Airbnb, by the way, this is another thing that I called. Airbnb is dying. Airbnb is dying for a few reasons. And I'm not even going to go into the fact that I'm banned from Airbnb. We all know why. A lot of us do. You can watch the episode. But Airbnb exploded during the pandemic. People really wanted to kind of vacation in other people's lives. The pandemic opened up every door of possibility. People were going... Maybe I want to live in Houston. Maybe I want to live outside in Nashville. And an Airbnb allowed you to basically manufacture the experience of somebody who was living in that locale. You would stay in their house. You'd swim in their pool. You would go to the coffee shop. You'd see what it would be like to live in Charleston or Atlanta or Miami or Austin or Phoenix Airbnb was huge. Hotels were closed, and the ones that were open didn't have services. You couldn't go to the gym, couldn't get any room service. It made a lot of sense to be by yourself with the other people that you were quarantining with in an Airbnb and cook your own food and sit out uh, on the porch or on the back deck. Well, the world has come roaring back, and that has not been good for Airbnb. Airbnb's revenues are plummeting. They're down nearly 50% in cities like Phoenix and Austin. The Airbnb collapse is pretty real. And now a lot of these, um, and and here's what happened with Airbnb. And I'm not going to rehash what I went through with Airbnb. Except to say this, the crux of the problem that I had with those two women was that they expected me to clean up the house after I had paid a cleaning fee in excess of $400. I did later threaten to kill them. That wasn't... <laughs> but the the catalyst for the whole issue, and ha- have them killed. I'm not going to kill them. Have them killed. Put money behind it and do it right. <laughs> but the, the, the issue, the catalyst for it, was a, why am I paying a cleaning fee? In addition to then having to clean, it's, it didn't make any sense. It felt strange. It felt weird. So there was that whole big war, and of course, Airbnb siding uh, with them, which is fine. Now Airbnb is collapsing. Ha ha. <laughs> but what what had happened is Airbnb started as like this funky, cool thing, and then the rules came. You can't be outside after 10 o'clock. No visitors. We're watching you on camera. If we see anyone that we don't, you know, if there's anybody's got, they don't have a license, they, they can't be here. If they're not checked in, if they're not an official guest, we don't want to see them. Airbnb is weird and creepy. We used to check in Airbnbs that we were almost certain a guy was like there several minutes before he checked in. It was really weird. And we also felt a few times that they had entered the house when we weren't there, when we came back. Airbnb is a criminal organization. A lot of disgusting people are renting their homes on Airbnb. They're they're voyeurs. They're spying on you, and they're potentially dangerous. This is the reality. This is no joke now. Airbnb has gotten away with a lot for a long time with this, and I think people have to start understanding how vulnerable you and your family are when you go to an Airbnb. A lot of the people who Airbnb out their homes are sick. They're sick. They're rapists. They're pedophiles. They're murderers. And the reason that they're trying to ensnare you in their disgusting home is so that they can kill you and your family. And that's why the... the, I'm not saying it's a bad business model. (laughs) I'm just saying that 50% of... The ads have dropped 50% because 50% of people want to live... They want to live. (laughs) They don't want their children to be kidnapped by the owner of the Airbnb who's going to make you clean the house up before they put you in a box in the basement. Have you ever met anyone who Airbnb'd their house? Let's be very honest. (laughs) 
have you ever met these? They're, no, no. No one will admit it. No one will tell you they do it. So whoever these sick freaks are, whoever these disturbed, I've only spoken to a few people that have their houses on Airbnb and they're all, without exception, disturbed. They're disturbed. I don't trust them. Remember that Airbnb story we did a while ago where somebody checked in and it was all like satanic imagery and all kinds of, these are the types of people that are on Airbnb. Get up one of these people, uh, one of these Airbnb hosts, and we'll, we'll listen to them in their own words because I always like to give the opposing point of view time on my show. Of course, Airbnb did not do that for me, but that's okay. What I have discovered through my limited dealings with people on Airbnb that are renting out their homes is that there is something not quite right with them. There's something not quite oh 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 dear. Here we are. Here's what we've learned and what we've earned after six months on Airbnb. And if you're new to the channel, in July of 2021, we bought this house. This and is it. We renovated Hold it this for, for about a minute. Three so well, this is interesting because this is again, this is a pandemic thing we're going to realize by the end of this that this is this airbnb unlike uber unlike some of the great advancements and achievements of our business community and our tech community airbnb is an aberration it is unholy it is satanic it is demonic and a half months and then launched on Airbnb in November of 2021. And we documented that entire experience and we have a weekly vlog series about what it's like to own an Airbnb in the Joshua Tree area. So if you're curious These about- These were not the two, by the way, the two people I, were, they were lesbians. <laughs> yeah. The two people that I had issues with at Airbnb uh, were lesbians. And so it's not them. But this is what happened at Joshua Tree. A lot of people started uh, coming up with these Airbnbs because everybody wanted an escape. And Joshua Tree, for a certain type of person, is a great escape. And I would like to know what they learned. What did they learn? What, a, what does a couple like this learn when they do Airbnb? Because usually the party line from all of these owners is that nobody respects my house. I just opened my house and people showed up and they started eating and living in it. I just wanted to make a little money, but people started showing up shitting in my toilet. Yeah, you rented out your house, you pig. <laughs> people showed up eating and shitting in my house. They're all angry that people dared to do the thing they paid to do, which is live in the fucking house. This first section's on deep cleaning, why it's necessary. This okay. The first thing they learned. Yeah. Let's let's hear why that's necessary. Deep cleaning is a must. We self-manage our property, so we come about Poor. once a month and do a deep clean where we just pull up all the rugs, get under everything, and just really make sure that the house is being maintained. Our cleaners really let us know what's going on in the house, kind of surface level. It, it just allows you to look in places that your cleaners don't normally do or and it's your house, so you know if something's wrong, something's out of place, something's going to be an issue. These people are, they're neat freaks, but they're they are clean freaks. They're sick. There's something wrong with them. I love how they're like, we self-manage. And then they're like, our cleaners. It's like, yeah. we do everything but clean. That That's what them Mexicans are for. These white devils, are, they're, they're, they're obsessed with their, they're sick. Do you see in their eyes how sick they are? They're sick in the head, these people. And they're obsessive about their fucking shit house. And all they care about is, like, how spotless it is. Keep going. So, yeah, here's more cleaning. 
that leads us to cleaners being the most important piece of your puzzle when it comes to your Airbnb. I cannot stress that enough. We had some issues in the beginning trying to find a great cleaner out here in the high desert. So you definitely have to weed through the weeds to get to the gems. It's a work in progress always because maybe something is out of place or whatever and it's always communication is key when it comes oh, to your cleaners. And if you have a management company, don't even listen to this because they're gonna be dealing with your cleaners. But if you are managing it yourself, that's like my one of my full-time jobs is managing this house. So I'm always, Michael too, always in constant communication with our cleaners and them letting us know what's going on. and. Just making Mrs. sure. That I'm sorry. <laughs> There's a spill in the sink. There's a spill in the sink. Do something. Constant communication with the cleaners. Lucky cleaners, huh? But these are the types of people. This thing where this group of people, there's a certain group of people who they gave their lives meaning by buying and renovating a house. It's strange. And then opening it up for other people to live in. And they're perpetually unhappy because they can't afford to live in their fucking house. Because they think they're, they're, this get-rich-quick scheme causes these people to renovate this house, make it really nice, and then do what they never wanted to do. Which is open the doors to other people. And then they become angry at their guests. They become enraged at their guests like they've done something wrong and they write all these passive aggressive rules and they tell them, it's basically like, hi, thanks for checking in, now fuck you. And let me tell you why. I'll tell you why. Look in their faces. They're unhappy that other people are coming into their home. Here's the section on reviewing bad Airbnb guests. This is oh boy. your situation right here. For the first few months after you've launched your Airbnb, you're really relying on reviews and you're terrified of getting bad reviews, right? But there's a thing called bad guests and they'll happen. And you're going to need to speak your truth when you have a guest that didn't follow the rules. That is a huge Ugh. thing that we've Whoa. learned. We've had a couple bad guests and we've given them decent stars as far as the review and then within the review, we say like, what's up, what happened? So that other hosts know, maybe we don't wanna book them or like caution when booking them. Because we know we rely on when somebody requests to book our place, we look at their reviews. And so we, at first we didn't realize how important that was, but now that we've had bad guests, we realize just how important that is. And just stepping your ego out of it, that's a big lesson. Yes. Removing your ego and just being like, hey, these are the things that, you know, didn't really line up with our with our checkout policy. Just do them in a nice way. Because our checkout no policy? Right. Because they want you, before you check out of an Airbnb, they want you to clean the entire house. You know, get, they take every bottle of water. God forbid there's a bottle of water in the refrigerator that's half drank. That's all got to get thrown out. The garbage has got to be out. The entire house has got to be cleaned, even though you paid a cleaning fee. Every towel's got to be washed and folded. It's like, guys, what's the fucking point? That's why you're, the revenues are down 50%, and people like her and him are going belly up. And I love that. Pitch the tent. <laughs> because this is what's happening. These people are out. They're being, they're being driven out of the market. They're being driven out of the market um, because... They have a sick and twisted obsession, okay, with this weird curated experience they're trying to give people that require, like when she's like, you didn't follow the rules. You see, you see your face when she said that? You see your face when she said that? She's, these are power-hungry psychopaths that own these things. And when she said that, you didn't follow the rules, what she was basically saying is, I get to boss other adults around. I get to give them bad ratings. I get to give them a report card. I get to give them a report card because they didn't follow the rules in my shitbox of Joshua Tree. And you could you could slip out who they you know they slip out every now and then who they really are. It was very hard to find a cleaner in the high desert. You got to weed through a lot of weeds. It's very hard to find a slave in the desert. Can't find any slaves in the desert. There's not enough good slaves in the desert for me. All right, let's finish up with them.
Nobody, you don't need to piss anybody off. If you need to vent, go to your journal or yeah. your best friend, yeah. not Airbnb like it's Facebook. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. <laughs> so dogs are going to come into your house whether you like it or not. And this is for our California and New York friends. We have gotten an abundance of requests asking, we'd love to book your house, but saw you didn't have a pet. Pets, we have an ESA animal. If it's a certified service animal, absolutely no problem. That's fake. ESA animal, no problem. Fake. But there is some sort of confusion and weird trickiness right. in the way people use the ESA animal. California, we can't charge for pet fees for a guest who visits with an ESA animal. And that kills you. And we are not allowed to decline the presence of an ESA. And, and where it gets kind of tricky is you're not it's allowed to ask for- I actually agree with them on this. Mm -hmm. It's fake. Because California's government is stupid. They allow people to scam you by taking their dog to your house and saying it's an emotional support animal, which is fake and doesn't exist. It exists only for severe autism and blind people. Everyone else, that's it. And I mean severe autism, meaning like you're nonverbal or it's like five words. Mm -hmm. If you are not severely autistic or blind, you do not get to walk around with a dog that you like to squeeze. It's all stupid. But they really can't say that. All right, anyway, we're not going to go on and on with them. I, they, they're no better or and no worse than the other people that are doing this. But what I'm telling you right now, is that I'm very, very happy that this is happening to Airbnb because the American public are getting smarter. They don't want to be subject to this type of insane treatment when you're spending money. And to see these two, the passive-aggressive anger, how, you know, excited they get about rules and the checkout policy... It, it, it takes all the fun away from owning a house. It takes all the fun away from earning money. It takes all the fun away for, um, from providing service to people. And that's why Airbnb is collapsing. And the only people that, anyone who's staying in Airbnb now is a fucking loser. Sorry. If you're in Airbnb now, you're, you're, a, you're a killer. You're, you're going to kill someone. Because there's no person... I have not heard air. Am I wrong? Are you guys hearing about people going to Airbnbs now? No, hotels are It's back. hotels are back, bitches. <laughs> Airbnbs are, no, what are you doing walking into somebody's house? What the fuck's that about, you freak? Go to a hotel. Let's kill this thing. Let's kill this thing once and for all. Let's get rid of Airbnb. Let's make it illegal. Let's see it for what it is. A place where violent white people do horrible things. <laughs> Can we get rid of it now? Ladies and gentlemen, the American Royalty Tour is on sale right now. TimDillonComedy.com. Promo code for all the shows is fake biz. F-A-K-E-B-I-Z. Except for Carnegie Hall. Tickets are going fast. Carnegie Hall in New York City. Tickets are NYCF, New York Comedy Festival, artist pre-sale code, uh, doing an hour of stand-up comedy and then a mini podcast with Ray Comp at Carnegie Hall. To see Ray Comp on stage at Carnegie Hall, it's a thing that few people will be able to say they were able to do, and it's certainly not anything Andrew Carnegie had in mind. Thank you for watching, everybody. We will be back next week with a background. Thank you for bearing with us.